Here we go. Is there a delay? No, I had to turn it off from my laptop. All right, tell me how your day is going. I was going fantastic. I can't complain. How about yourself? My life is amazing. I don't even know what I did to deserve this life. I, I can concur. Got you, got you, got you. So I put up a post, I put this post up, and Miss Roxanne uh, took up issue with it, even to the aspects of the decline, you know, and as it pertains to leverage. With that said, um, I'd like to jump on into this thing. Um, is it just dance that you believe women do have to leverage? Can you repeat that question? Is it your stance that you believe women do have to leverage? Women do not have to leverage. Women... No, no, listen, listen. I said they do have the leverage. They do have the leverage, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love for you to expound on that. Um, just the way the trajectory of the world is going right now. Women, particularly Black women, have increased in business ownership. We have now tapped into the millionaire status. We are the ones that are done the business industry. We are now at a point where we have the ability to be selective. When many moons ago, it was the men that had the leverage to be selective. Ma'am, I think we're talking about two completely different things. You I, do know we're talking about relationships, right? We are talking about relationships okay, and we're talking about the comments that you made that were, um, I don't even know a word of intelligence to put to it. Give it to me. Because of the fact that you utilized your platform to discuss a matter that is detrimental to the growth and mental health of women. You said women need to look in the mirror and if they do not have the body of a 29-year-old, that is their dating value. Their dating value has decreased. I actually didn't say that, but I'll just let you say it. I said if you can look in the box, if you can look in the mirror, well, let me, well, well, we're just going to do this chronologically. Let me ask you this. Okay. When women are walking down the street, mm -hmm. And men, and, and in an extreme way, get men's attention. Typically, what is it that got that man's attention? Men are, from the beginning of time, driven by eyesight. It's the physicality of a woman. So I, I really, really need to know, why do you keep bringing up your millionaire status? And by the way, only 28% of you make over $75,000. So you're not climbing like you would suggest, simply not. And um, if, you, if you disagree, I'd like for you to share that link with me because it doesn't exist. And I know it doesn't exist. You just asked me about women walking down the street. Right. And you asked me why or what. I Is asked you typically when women are walking down the street and they cause a man to, to go gaga goo goo. Mm -hmm. What caused the man to go gaga goo goo? And I answered your question. I said okay, it's you did. physical. Okay, you did. So, again, my question is, why do you continue bringing up money that you guys have as it pertains to your dating value when we don't care about your money? Men don't care about our money. I agree with you on that topic. So why did you bring but it up? That point that I brought up was in response to your question. Your question is what I answered. Man, and about women having leverage, do I believe that women have the leverage currently? And I agree. Okay, they okay, man, listen, you're, you're, you're contradicting yourself. You're admitting that we don't care about your money as it pertains to romance. We don't care. Are you admitting that? You don't. Okay, I okay. So listen, just please try to follow me. If we don't care about your money. Okay. But you're stating that that is your guys' leverage. That's it, not what I said. You asked me a question. Do I believe women have the leverage? And I said, yes. You didn't ask me if women have the leverage with dating. You didn't ask me if women have the leverage with anything. Excuse but me. But ma'am, from the beginning of the show, didn't I, t I told you, I said, we're talking about romance. You remember? 
Oh, I didn't hear that part. I'm sorry. Well, you actually answered me when I asked you. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, you repeated to the people that are on live with us right now, further on the discussion. But which, mean, which means you heard me, right? I'm not going to get into a back and forth since you want That's to. what women do. That's what women do. But it's fine. It's fine. No, um, it's a healthy discussion. I don't. It takes two people. I agree. To I agree. Um, I so, but we're still stuck here. I have to get us past the part where, why did you bring up money? I that, is no, that is leverage for you guys in no aspect of this. No, I wasn't pertaining to the dating. What so I, was, I have to ask you why you brought it up there. I brought it up because you asked me a question regarding leverage. Do I believe women have the leverage? Not only in dating do we have the leverage, we also have the leverage overall. That was the point that I was trying to make. And if you think that men have the leverage in A, dating, and B, in life, period, I beg to differ. That's fine. That, that's what we're here to do is we're here to respect each other's opinions. Exactly. So my thing is this. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had any work done, any liposuction, any type of cosmetic procedures? Not at all. Okay. I'd like to start this off. What leverage outside of money do you think that you ladies have? Um, education. Ma'am, okay, I got to say this again. I got to say this again. Yes, we're talking about dating. I got to say this to all of the audience. Okay. We're talking about dating. Yes. You it's just admitted to me that when, men, when a woman is walking down the street and gets a man's attention, you said it's looks. Ma'am, it's not money. It's not, and we don't care. We don't care about that. You asked me a question. And you asked my opinion. And I would appreciate if we're going to have an educated discussion that you allow me to complete my thought. Well, I have to also stop you when you're going off to a place that's, that you seem to be retracting, even with the money. It seems like you're touching on the thing that you did with money. And so then once, you, I, once I challenge you on the I, money I, thing, I, once I challenge you on the money not having anything to do with the dating, then you say you brought up this, but you're doing the same thing. So I have to moderate this show to where it's not getting tangled up. Oh, no, we're not going to get tangled up because when I think that it's no longer productive, I remove myself from the situation. Well, you can remove yourself now. That doesn't work on me. Oh, no. Well, that we're doesn't not work on me. You don't you don't run this show. I run this show. You, and you do. And you do. This is your platform. Yeah, well, you, so you definitely do. can't threaten me with some type of I can leave now because you I don't, definitely could. I don't issue threats. Not All right. Issue. Let's move on. Let's move on, though. Um, okay. Go ahead. Expound on what you were talking about with the education. You asked me. What leverage do I believe that women have? In the dating climate. In the di dating climate. And my opinion, this is my opinion, Roxanne's opinion, education do does play a part. Because what does education contribute to? Communication. When a woman walks down the street and a man first sees her, he is driven by eyesight. He is driven by the physicality of the woman. Moving past that, when he starts to date that woman, it's more than physical. Now, if that individual is just interested in sex, that's one thing. But if this is a man that wants to get to know this woman, partner with this woman, grow with this woman, it requires more than the physical. Which means which, education, right? Which means education. What is this woman bringing to the table? Okay, that's fine. What that's fine. Value, so, what added value is she bringing to this man? Because I looked at some of your videos and one of your videos in particular stated that a woman can add value to men and in order for a woman to bring value to said man it requires some things not just sex not just physical okay so um i'd like to ask you a question um and we can prove what i'm about to ask you just in case you think about deviating and run off do you believe that the women of the 60s, 50s, and 70s. I'm not going to say that because 
I, I'd like to say something without it triggering you. So just, 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 um, just yeah. try to go. Just try to understand where I'm going without being triggered. Do you Mr. think that those women were of higher value than the women today, as as it pertains to being more successful, as the, how the kids turn out, as it pertains to being in longer lasting marriages, as it pertains to higher marriage ratio. Do I believe they're more successful than present day women? In those things, yes. In the family dynamic, in the overall value of the nuclear family, yes. In comparison, yes, I agree with you. I appreciate that. So my grandmother had a sixth grade education. She stayed in the same house for 70 years with the same man. If education plays such a high role in this romantic dynamic, then why were the women who were less educated achieving an 80% marriage ratio and you guys are maintaining a 17%? The reason why is because they tolerated more and were conditioned to believe that that's all they had to accept. That's not what they have to accept. Women now have gotten jobs outside of the household. They're more experienced. They're more diverse. And have things gotten better for them. 75% of you cannot and will not marry. Listen, just, you have been ranked on multiple surveys mm -hmm. as the most undesirable woman to date on the entire planet. And the numbers back it up. The numbers of your of your romance back it up. And let's say this. Let's say statistics are manipulated. We can go off of me and your family experience, just the people that we know. We can go off of it. That's how we know it's accurate. How many of you get married? Do you know when people get married, when they are deemed... I'm going to tell you this from a man's perspective. Okay. A man can be smitten... Do you agree with that? He can be hit by Cupid in a fashion that is so strong, it overpowers all of his logic and all over his all of his sexual senses. Can we agree on that? Yes, we can. Why isn't that happening? You believe it's not happening? Ma'am, you guys, 75% of you cannot get married. <laughs> Listen, they pulled the data off of Tinder, Plenty of fish and POF. The amount I, of I, swipes that you guys get directed your way. I, I need you to pull up that exact statistic that you're quoting. Because I, I can't do this and pull up the I can't do them, them all. Do you Just, have a listen, let, let me do this for you. And and I'm glad you brought that up. Here's what I would ask you to do. Mm -hmm. If I say 76% of African American women have multiple children by multiple men. What does your common sense tell you that I'm wrong or right? You're talking about a specific, isolated group of women. You're not talking about... But ma'am, listen. Listen, what I'm saying is this. I'm speaking about what you know about these women who you are and the people you know. Do, do, you, do you have a large family? Yes. Okay. Do you have many who have children that were born outside of wedlock? No. Now, that is an isolated incident. Can we agree on that? No, it's not. Oh, so you believe the majority of African-American women have children inside of a marriage. That's what you believe. Let, let me give you a little background. Well, I'd like you to answer that. I'd like you to answer that. I can't answer that. Well, it has to be one or the other. And I'm you said it's not an isolated incident, so it has to be. I mean, we can't. I can't allow you to spaghetti the show. I'm not spaghettiing the show. Well, if you say that that's not an isolated incident, then it has to be normal. I'm trying to answer your question with why I don't think it's an isolated incident. And if you allow me to. But ma'am, I asked you a question. I do. I asked you, do you believe it's the norm in the black? If it's not an isolated incident, it has to be the norm, right? I can't speak to if that is the norm because I was not born and raised. But you could speak to whether or not it's not an isolated incident? I can say that my situation is you not. You do know people are watching this, right? Pardon me? You do know people are watching this, right? Oh, yeah. There's 13 <laughs> people. And this so is then You can speak on whether or not it's an isolated incident, but you can't speak on whether or not it's the norm in the black community. It's not community. an isolated incident in my environment. 
Ma'am, you are the definition of an isolated incident. You can't be quantified in the mass. Now, I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you or me don't matter in the black community. The overall is where we get our numbers from. I, if I, listen, I have my children by one woman. If they wanted to do a study on me, my information would not be enough to help the black community as far as the research. I'm an isolated incident. For one second, I'm looking at the comments and one individual said tap dancing. Sampling 101, can you um, expound on that? But ma'am, no, this is me and you. I appreciate it if you didn't even pay attention to the comments. Okay. All right. I wanted to address the questions that were being popped up in the live. But as for me saying that I'm an isolated incident, and if you would allow me to answer. But ma'am, we can't, well, I can't allow you to drag the show out. I'm not dragging the show out. How so I've got to ask you, do you disagree that you're an isolated incident? I disagree. So you're the majority. I'm going to let this thing go and play out. Yes, I, I would hope that you would let it play out. He said, I'm, you are dancing and evading. Man, if you're going to continue to do the comments, you can jump on their live. This, is, this doesn't make sense for you to do. This is what I need you to understand. That's why they said you're tap dancing, because right now you're I'm buying time. You're arguing to buy but, time to think I, of a proper answer because you're no, not coming up with any good answers. No, 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 no. What I came on your show was in response to the video that you had. But ma'am, you won't and answer me. Let me finish. Because what we're not going to do is we're, we're going to do whatever I want to do on this platform. That's, that's what we are going to do. And we'll what see. What you like to do we'll is see. you don't want to be challenged. That's cool. You don't want to be we'll challenged. See. We'll see who's more successful. Now, if you want to have an articulate discussion where we... Listen, you're not going to pay attention... On my show, you're not going to pay attention to the comments. You're not okay, going to address them right. and give me your leftovers. No. That's not going to happen. And I'm fine with that. Man, so let, let's, let's, let's move past this Let's move past this Let's move past this Let's move past I this did part. not know that's how you run your show. That you don't address. Ma'am, can we move past that part? Okay. But what we're not going to do is talk over each other. That's not intelligent. That's counterproductive. And I don't have time for that. But you you ask don't need the subject on, alone either, will you? Ask me to come on. Neither will you leave that show. subject alone. And I asked you, could we move past that? But you, you keep bringing it up. No, I just want to lay the foundation. You can't lay any rules on here. For me, I can if it's your show, I'm letting you know what my boundaries are. And if you can't respect my boundaries, we can go ahead and end it right now on your show. Hey, everybody knows what you're doing. Oh, no. Yes, I'm not doing do. that. What I'm doing is I'm addressing an individual and setting my boundaries and letting it be known. But that I'm asking you, can we get on with the show? I have a Kevin Samuel situation. We're not about to do that. You do know that That's everyone exactly knows you're running. Listen, do. everyone knows you're running from these questions. What questions? You asked me if I think that my situation is an isolated incident. I asked you, can we get I past what you keep staying on? I do not think my situation is an isolated incident because I know plenty of women just okay. like me that come from families just like me that don't have multiple baby daddies that do not have multiple children from multiple partners. So I'm asking, you, is it the majority in the black community? That's a majority in an isolated population of people. I don't think anyone, even you, understands what you just said. Yes, I, I do fully understand. There so, are women that are of a lower economic class that that comment pertains to. Is that the majority of African-American women? I beg to differ. And if you have facts that state, that quantify... Man, what I'm asking you is, up. are you saying that your circumstances and those many other women that you're talking about would add up? to the majority in the African-American population. In that context, no. So, so 
So it's the minority, right? Correct. So, ma'am, why did you argue with me about all of this? I did not argue with you on all of that. What see, I and that, That's why I interrupt sometimes. Because I have to move us away from the stuff to where I see where it's going. You came all the way back around to agree with me. And I never said I disagreed with you. You did. You said you're not an isolated incident. In my environment. <laughs> Do you literally mean <laughs> under your roof? No. I'm saying in my upbringing, being born and raised in Toronto, Canada, not coming to America until this I was is going 19. To be a good show. This is going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. Not coming to America until I was 19. Okay, and that's I fine. That's fine. Um, the definition of leverage is maximum advantage. Correct. And you believe black women have that? At this current point in time, yes. So why are 75% of them not able to marry? Listen, not only that, why does 70% of them have multiple different children by multiple different men? Does that sound like advantage to you? It's not an advantage. What I do agree with is the fact that we have to peel back the layers of the onion and get down to the root of the problem. Well, the show is not talking about that. The show is talking about leverage. True, the show's not talking about that. Right, but because I, you have to stand on your points. Your points was well, you do have the leverage. That sounds like a catastrophe. That does not sound like leverage to any culture. It is where the gangbangers come from. It is where the forceful of those guys come from. 80% of the time, the people who are in prison, the people who go back and forth to jail, the derelicts and the drug addicts are on the streets, they come from single parent moms. That does not sound like an advantage. It, and I'd like for you to explain to me where in a mass of latitude that comes close to any type of scenario of advantage. I think what we're talking about um, and the points that you just made, I'm a person that quantifies with facts and percentages. You just said 75% of African-American women um, can't get married because yeah. they are single mothers, have multiple baby fathers, um, and they contribute to the gang. Hold on, ma'am. I did not say that. And please don't say things. Even though what you're saying is accurate, I didn't say that. I said 75% of you can't marry. And then I went on telling you about the things that I believe are detriments that you say you guys have maximum value. That's not value. I just simply started naming things that I believe are catastrophes that can't be attributed to maximum advantage. Okay. I'm going to say this. I don't usually say this because I try to protect my race. I also underplay. Usually by 10%, I underplay the stats because I hate making us look as bad as we really are. So in honesty, sometimes I lie about it, to be honest. Our women are driving the STD route right through the roof. Through the roof. None of what I'm saying sounds like advantages. Listen, 39% of you have the, your children calling the wrong man dad. None of this sounds like advantages. To be honest, when you accepted this live, mm -hmm. I said this to myself. This is somebody who's going to be involved in nuclear fission or something. She's probably going to eat me alive. For her to even have accepted this with the topic being based on leverage, you had to know something that I am completely oblivious about. I was a little intimidated, to be honest. I thought you were going to come with something none of us have never heard of. Let, let me say this. And, and I'm going to tell you the premise behind why I accepted your invitation. Okay. If you if if you can shortly without getting too far away from our topic, I'm I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna give you that one. Okay. okay. Well, here's my thing: you can't concede to both of these. You with everything that's being laid out here, you can't also stand on. You have yes. There we are no other group of men on this entire planet that are coming in to date black women on the entire planet. Say that one more time. There are no other group of men in masses coming in to date black women. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? I disagree. 
So there are, see, and, and I'm going to ask you this. It's not disrespectful. With me, you're going to have to be careful and pay attention to these words. You do realize I said masses, right? Yeah. Ma'am, there's no race of any race that dates in masses. Out of all races, oh, they yeah. date outside of their race. It's only within between 14 and 26%. Um, so forget black people. All races typically I stay within their communities. So you can't be right. Are you sure about that? Where are you pulling your facts from, Mr. Prince? Man, I'm please, let's just assume that I'm right and that I'm telling the truth and let's get past this. No, no, because no. Because that's a deflection. You know it, I'm right. It's not a deflection. I'm asking you to prove your point with facts because I'm a factual individual. I'm not going to sit here. I'd like to ask you to do this thing for something. me. If counter. Every time you feel like doing that, up. counter my stats. With, with stats that you believe they are. So I say it's between 14 and 21. You tell me the I, overall population that dates outside their race. What number do you think it is? And I'm not going to address that because we're going to have another lie. So we just can't get anywhere then, right? Excuse, excuse me. <laughs> Let's, go <ahead. laughs> Let's go ahead. You can sit here and pull percentages out of the sky. I don't do that. I'm an educated woman. I have a platform. There I wouldn't be spewing out numbers to where people can come back in my comments after they research and well, show me wrong. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to do my research with the numbers that you've quoted. And when I come back, I can have facts. Yeah, so you're telling me you came to this thing in feelings and opinions? I didn't come here with feelings. What I came here with is to address you and the video that you made that said that women that are over the age of 30 are quantified by looking in the mirror and their dating value. No, ma'am, that was an example that I threw into that video. Okay, and the example came. And you admit it to me, men are visual. So am men I are right? Men are visual. So Got am it I right? right? But women are not valued whether or not they dag out, look in the mirror, and they have the body of a 29 year old. Ma'am, again, I'm going to say this so you'll quit putting words in my mouth. You I said, said what I said, and I put that in there as an example. Okay, you're so agreeing did, with me, but I don't think you want to. Where does your example come from? Ma'am, you're agree. Okay, let me ask you this. Why do men go after 29-year-olds? <laughs> you really you don't want to answer that, do you? You really want me to answer that? Because of their own insecurities. So it has nothing to do with their bodies? Oh, my God. Do you, do you hear how you sound? I have a platform. where. Do you see what they're saying about you in the comments? I don't care what they say about me. They're saying use another Kevin Samuels. Somebody said that on that very same thing. And you know what someone under what they said said? What? But is the information accurate? Is the information accurate? So Listen, you know, I can be a Kevin Samuels wannabe. I can be a Michael Jordan wannabe. Mm -hmm. Is the information accurate or not? Right? That's what it boils down to. I don't think whether or not it boils down to whether your information is correct or not. For me, I can't... Oh, so I see why we have a disagreement then. You're no, not based on information. I can't get past how you disrespect women by pro improving your point. You know the you problem that we have in the black community? You the thing that you guys define as disrespect... Speak? Can I speak? I have sat here quiet. Have well, ma'am, I'd appreciate it if you make points. It seems like you just keep saying things. You're not making points. Everybody in the audience knows you're not making points. You say you can't believe I disrespect, but you're not making points. It sounds like you have gripes and quarrels. I don't have a gripe in the world. Well, I'd like to let you finish then. Life is amazing. What I do have a problem with is a black man using his platform to talk about the value of women and furthering the stereotype, furthering the ignorance. Ma'am, but I would like you to go ahead to what you said. Can you finish speaking? And I, I'd like you to because you're going somewhere way away from the show. N no, I'm not going anywhere away from the show. The show is talking about the leverage, ma'am. The invitation was to my comment 
from someone that had a fake account that had 13 followers that asked me to describe, well, tell me what makes you someone that would be desirable for a high value man. To Ma'am, do you agree at the beginning of this show, we told them that the topic of this subject matter was leverage. Do you agree with that? Oh, yes, I do. But also, while we touch on leverage, we're going to address you. Ma'am, that's not going to get us anywhere. I and can the, prove that they my beliefs. You can't no, disprove them. But what you're failing to understand is you make valid points. What I am saying is it's your delivery and the disrespect that you are giving to women when you deliver your point. So you what, about the women? what about the women who come on my platform and tell other women to get out of their feelings because he's telling the truth? Which one of you women do we believe? Do we believe the woman that says that I, or do we believe you? I'll be honest with you. I've never watched your show. I've, I did not. You popped up on my For You page. And I had to share it to my circle of friends because I said, here we have another Kevin Samuels. You know what white women said about Kevin Samuels after he died? I don't care about what white women have to say. Well, listen, there's not going to be no disrespect on this platform. Well, I, 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 I got to ask you what's wrong with you. I did not say anything disrespectful to white women. When somebody I, makes a statement and you say, I don't care, do you think that's respectful? No, I did your not. Your next I, comment, your next comment, what if I say, I don't care? Do you think that's respectful? What was disrespectful? I said, I'm... Never mind, ma'am. We're not going to get nowhere with that. You're <laughs> going to continue. Do you see I, what you're doing? I don't care. You what can't be wrong for anything. Discussing black women. I'd like to ask you this. We're going to go ahead and play it your way. Um, name the top three things that black men are failing in. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Where do I begin? Okay, you can stop right there. I did that on purpose. You see... How it's easy for you to expound on that, but when someone addresses where black women are failing, it's bashing, disrespecting. Do you see what you just did? How did I bash him? Ma'am, I'm saying, you, as soon as I gave you the door open to talk about black men, yes. you said, where do I begin? Where so do I why, begin? Why when someone critiques black women, it's disrespecting them? Not only, not only when they critique them, but with accurate information. Because, <laughs> let me tell you, you are sitting here talking about black women, what we don't do, what we can't do, what, what, what our faults are. But we are the same women that you guys come to when y'all need help. When do we need help from... Man, were you listening to yourself? Oh, yes. The, yes. Fuck, the WNBA right now, even with the women who have went on blasting men in the NBA are begging NBA players right now. Please, they go $10 million in debt every year. Do you know the only reason that the WNBA hasn't folded yet? Black men. The only reason. It's the only. I, I can pull it up for you. You need us. We don't need anything from you. <laughs> Even though you came from us. We came from God. A man was created first. Wow. Do you disagree with that? Wow. I'm asking you a simple question. Do you disagree I, with that? I have nothing more to say. You said. Ma'am, I'm this, asking you, do you, you agree said, that man was created without a woman? You said black women need you. You don't need us. Ma'am, I want to ask you, do you believe that man was created without a woman? I'm going to give you it. Yeah, let's go biblical. Yes. So, okay, ma'am. So, where did you come from? We, listen, we're, we're not going to deviate from you. I have to ask you why you tend to focus on points that are moot. It's not going to get our show in any furtherance. It's not. But listen, let, let, let's, and that's why sometimes when you hear me cut you off, that's why I have to keep this show going. But listen, let's do this. Women have the maximum advantage. I have to ask you this. What, and this doesn't pertain to men or women. What is the most detrimental thing that has taken place in the black community? I 
I would think the most detrimental thing that has taken place in the black community is the disrespect of the black woman. You're not going to say any of the murders we do to each other? You no. just, see, and that shows you right there. I praise God that you just said, and she doubled down, people. She said, no, the murders in the black community aren't the most detrimental thing. She said that disrespect, that's narcissism at its highest level. And that's your opinion. So to hell with these young black boys who are getting killed. The I didn't disrespect say Disrespect of black women that, by the way, they I are did, earning. I did not say. You doubled down on it, ma'am. You asked me my opinion. And what did you say? And I gave you my opinion. And after you gave me your opinion, I said, I, you mean more than us I, killing I each other? My, and you said yes. Can I back up my point? Can you allow me to speak? First, I need you to acknowledge whether or not what I what just took place, what I just explained, took place is true. I asked you what the most detrimental things in the black community. You said the disrespect of black women, and I said, "Wow!" Even superseding the murders, and you said yes. No, I didn't say yes. No, I did not say yes. Could I said, you please tell me what you said after that. You said even superseding the murders. And I'd like to ask you what you said after that. Let me tell you something, Mr. Prince. Okay? I know that's right. I know that's right. Because <laughs> this is all being videoed, so. Yeah, it's being videoed right now. So I'm going to ask you to double down. Do you believe that the disrespect of black women is, are you standing on that? That's your number one. That's most detrimental to the black community. I said it. Yes. And I'll tell you why. Well, ma'am, you did. So it does to supersede the murders. Let me say this. And I'm going to need you to um, stop with the antics and the animation. Ma'am, are you listening to yourself? Oh, that I... minute you say I didn't say that, but then you double down on it. Mr. Prince, if we're going to have a dialogue and affect... Yeah, we're not going to... We, hey, we're not going to deflect. We're going to stay on the topic. We're not. I said what I said. Okay. And the reason I said what I said, the disrespect of the black woman... And the contribution of that disrespect in the black home aids in the mothering of these children that are creating these crimes and going out and shooting people and robbing people and doing everything underneath the sun. The disrespect like you using your platform are contributing to by saying your worth is this, your worth is that, instead of using your platform to bring awareness on what we can do to fix it. What do you think I'm doing? So tell me <laughs> that you have done to fix it. Um, so I need, I need to make sure that you're going to double down on that. You're saying the most detrimental thing that's taking place in the black community is the disrespect of the black woman. Yes. Okay. So what do you think black women contribute to the level at which they're being disrespected? I'm sorry. Say that again. What do you think black women are contributing to the level of disrespect that they're receiving? Do you think they're playing any role in the backlash that they get from people? Almost definitely. Black I, Jesus, I, I, how you doing, my brother? I, I never I'm doing said well, man. women were not contributing to the destruction that is taking place. Let Ms. me Rhonda, ahead. how's your day? I hear you, sweetheart. Just give me a second. I'd like to introduce people. Miss Rhonda, how's your day going? Peace to you, brother. My day is going great. Hi, everyone. There, I she, have is, there she is. Um, so what we've been talking about is the leverage. Um, you know, the post that I put up to where it was saying that Women need to start watching their mouths. Or I think I said it some other way. Um, what did I say? I think I said they need to shut their mouths in terms of, you know, the backlash that men get from women. Even if you say hi to them. And some of them have went on record saying, you know, when a black man approaches me, maybe I wasn't in the mood that day and things like this. Miss um, uh, Roxy's standpoint is that women have the leverage. Anybody go. As far as, so, as far as our dating, when 75% of African-American women aren't getting married, when, you know, there's a plethora of our STD rates going up, 
I don't when we look up leverage, it's maximum advantage. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, Miss Miss Roxy, how are you today, love? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, let me. I, I want to try to understand your thinking and get some of your ideas because okay. I think you and I might think very differently about what our history has been as a people, you know, and, and a lot of other things. But I wanted to try to get an understanding really quick here. All right. So you said that uh, if you're basically you're saying that if if black men as a group did a better job respecting black women that would be the chief and most important thing we could do in correcting our community. Hey, Black right? Jesus, a really quick one, brother. I forgot that that's where we picked off at. I need to elaborate on that really quick, and I'm going to give you the entire platform. Ms. Ro Ms. Roxy, when you said that, the reason that I asked you that is because there's a significant portion of us who we're not God, and we can't say what we say supersedes what you say, but there are outcomes that are created by certain formulas. Once these formulas are brought together, Every time they can pretty much present, create, if not the exact same, a very similar outcome, right? You said it's black women being disrespected. Those children that are coming from these black women, they are the everything that people, white people, all of society is complaining about with us. And if you say black men shouldn't be leaving them, black women are leaving black men. Black even now, black women are still black men are still yearning to get married. They're petitioning black women. So if we could get my stance is if we could get black women to stop having all of the frivolous sex, right? If we could get them to start marrying before they carry, a lot of this would go away, like in the next generation. A lot of it would. So that's why I asked you when you were referring to the disrespect of black women. I would say 75% of the disrespect that they receive goes to them. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, so like, let me ask you uh, a question. Have you, ha have you heard guys sitting up talking about the fact that half of the men in our community are, have no children are, and are unmarried? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Have you heard that men saying that half the men in the community are unmarried and have no children? Over half of them. Have you heard that statistic before? Have you no. heard men saying that before? No. Okay. All right. So, does it surprise you to know that over that fifty-four out of a hundred black men have no children are and are unmarried? Does that surprise? You? Yeah. Did you, you did you know that? Are you surprised by that? No, not at all. Okay. Does it does it surprise you to know that less than twenty out of a hundred of the men are responsible for ninety out of a hundred of the kids that are born out of wedlock in the community? Did you know that? Like these, so when you say like you know, if black men are leaving black women, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that they're leaving them. It's a very small percentage of men where the women are giving all the sex and the babies to them. Did you know that that's a statistical fact about our community? No, I did not. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm giving you the good faith that you you you're not trying to just say negative stuff about black men or black women. Like you have a, a, a set of information that you have been given that you base your opinions off of. And if you look at the media, both you and I, then it's easy to come to the conclusion that there are no good black men. They're few and far in between. And the reason that black women have such a hard time finding good husbands is because most of the men are, are destitute, right? They're gay, they're in jail, they're involved in nefarious activity, right? They're having a whole bunch of kids by a whole bunch of women. But the truth of the matter is when we look at the numbers about our community, it's not true. What we find is that half of black men are single and childless, 54 are single and childless, 33% uh, of us are married. And that less than 18% of the men are responsible for 90% of the children that are born out of wedlock. And I think that that's because we have a culture that's being sold to us and given to us, right? That is telling our women that it doesn't matter who they give access to their body to, that they don't need to get married before they have children, that they don't need men. They sing with a women, they don't need men. They want a man, they don't need a man. The dominant narrative that are being sold to the women in our community are all against family before children. 
Would you agree that those are dominant narratives? Dominant mean not that there are other narratives, but those are the most dominant narratives you hear being sold to black women. Would you agree with that? Oh, I agree with you. Okay, so the, most of the men are not participating in this. 82% of black men are either married or single and childless. It's 18% of the men. Like you look at Nick Cannon and, and Future, they're an example. You got one irresponsible guy and 10 irresponsible women that are fighting to have sex with this man and reproduce for him. And that's what we have in the community because everybody's telling our women that who they give access to their body doesn't matter. And you and I both know that's inaccurate, right? It does matter if you let a whole bunch of men jump up and down on you or you have babies for men who never intend on marrying you and are asking you to be their wife. You know that. We can agree on that, right? Of course. Okay. All right, so... Miss Rhonda. Hey, Black Jesus. Yeah, so Black Jesus, sir. Hear me. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm going to drop you real quick, but I don't want you to go anywhere. I'm going to pull you back on. Okay. Hey, Roxy, I appreciate you listening to me. And and thank you for, for giving me some space to talk to you. And please look up some of those numbers I was saying, because oh. it'll probably shock you to find out that most black men have, are, are not participating in this. There's twice as many of our women who have children outside of wedlock than there are men. And it's, it's an attack, a spiritual attack on our women, a spiritual attack on you on, on, and on your daughters, right, to convince them to treat themselves like they have no value when in fact they do in my opinion that i think that's what's happening to us i'll drop thank you for I having appreciate me appreciate you my brother i appreciate the viewpoint miss Rhonda. yes sir tell me how your day has been going great i love the show very important Talk to very Talk sensitive to very hard to hear but very necessary so, so really quick before you go in with your thoughts, um, it just all came from a post of mine, you know, the one where I said that, listen, there's things coming to the United States. Our women are spoiled. They live in a lap of luxury. If somebody even disrespects me, they can call the police, but they're hoping men come and things like that. So because of all of these luxuries that have been built, I didn't want to believe it, but there really is a debate as to whether or not a person needs a man or how valuable men are. Um, my question to you is this. She suggested that my platform is degrading women, disrespecting women, um, based on the things that I say, but she admitted that I have um, some points that seem valid. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that well, it's degrading women or disrespectful? Well, a few things. Um <clears throat> It is spiritual, like Black Jesus spoke of. So that is the energy on the validity and the importance of it, because it is a spiritual attack. And um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, is the point of the children um, just having the same father and... You know, uh, it's almost as if it's one in every state, you know, this man that's this man, Dingo, that floats through the neighborhood. And, <laughs> and what happens is, it is, um, I don't like using this word. I don't like those new modern age words, but I'm going to use it just for this one time. I don't, uh, the, it's a very narcissistic thing that happens right. because, um, you hear about him. And this is where the sisters need to look at themselves and we don't want to do it. You hear about him. I can remember I was in a very, very loving relationship with a man who the whole town called Hold him. On, I think she said she can't hear. You can't hear. Can you hear me? Maybe you're not muted. Can you hear now? You're chipping in and out. I, I can hear you now. Okay. Can you hear now? I can hear you now, but I just completely missed when Miss Rhonda started talking. 
Okay, go ahead, Miss Rhonda. You were talking about. Okay. Um, oh, you didn't miss um, too much, sis. We were just talking about the um, the repercussions of of this action of sleeping with this man who's just really, really, really good and bad. We, we do, we fall short of that. And, and it is, I don't like the those sound bite words, those new modern words, but I'm going to use it just this one time. And it's narcissistic and it's narcissistic of a woman to hear about how good a man is in bed. And then she makes it her business to go and find out. That's why you have a lot of children in the community. They look alike because they have the same father. And because you heard about him and the way how he makes love and you see the moon and you see the stars. And that is the ultimate in narcissism. And we've done that to ourselves as sisters. It's almost seems like it's one in every town where there's this man and he, uh, I knew one and he was known as ugly, which is another thing that we need to work on. See, these are the things that are inward in us. And you called him ugly from the neck up. Ugly, second, big nose, Rhonda. big lips. Give me a second. Hey, bomber, if those comments get out of, too out of hand, permanently block them. Any types of high levels of aggression, just block them. Go ahead, Miss Rhonda. And, but when the doors are closed from the neck down, yes. Because a lot of men, dingo, black men are known for just having beautiful, strong bodies from head to toe. Well, let's keep it a buck. We're going to keep it a buck. And so even MC Light and Queen Latifah about this limb, about this width, word around you, was that you so-and-so. So that's what that is. That's why I always say, too, and I don't want to deviate from the show as well. I always say that that energy about that side chick is, it is an, and an, it is, um, Pulled out when necessary because a lot of women it already lives in there because that's side chick behavior right there. When you sleep with him and he know you know that he sleeps with Lisa and two B, right, right. but you live in two A and you sleep with him anyway. That's side <laughs> chick behavior. So it's that true. so it's something that we do to ourselves as women. Step one, what um, Black Jesus said is spiritual. It is not natural for a woman to regret what her uterus can do that's not natural and if a woman cannot embrace that fact that it's not natural she can't learn she can't learn from me at least mm -hmm. um but those are facts that we have to face the other thing that we have to face is after we lay with these men and make these children that they don't want and that we don't want either we just get stuck with them because there's no place to hide them so we're stuck with them. That's why you have a lot of women lie about their children. Don't worry about how many children I have. It's a secret because your children show how many times you lay down with no protection and no responsibility. That's what our children show in black communities. 100%. Step three. But what we do is we have these children and then we treat them like crap. This is sisterhood secrets is my perspective. And we have these children, and they are with us. We push them out, and we take them home. They're two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Most of the time, they're with a black woman. So in that time, you have this boy, this male child. He's ugly, black, peasy head, stink, funky, ASS, clean up your room, no good, harassing him in the shower, terrorizing him with an electric cord in the shower, beating him. He's all going through puberty, you demeaning him, degrading him, smacking him on TikTok in front of everybody. This is what we do to our children. They're stuck with us in the home as women. If we're so great by ourselves, how come our children aren't reflecting because they're our fruit? Ms. Why are the children allowed to run rampant? Why? And that's because it's an imbalance. The, the home was not designed for one person. And we have to face that, Stacey. And we don't want to. It ain't working. It's an imbalance. I know a woman who... Just women in the house all the time. Women, women, women in the house. Male children. Her son walked around with her shoes on and playing in her wigs. 100%. And that's what he did his whole life. We're breeding the feminine race of the men because we're having them by ourselves and they're only around women and they're around hurt, unhealed women, which is double indemnity for the black male child.
period. And we don't want to face it. It ain't working. And the proof that we have work to do is the way that we treat each other as females. So I don't know where we are being so great and being so educated because every time I see a bunch of black women, somebody's getting dragged down the street by their way. No dispute, no dispute. Miss Rhonda, listen, I need to drop you really quick. I don't want you to go, go far because I want to pull you and Black Jesus back on. She's gone? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it, you hear me, Miss Rhonda? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, listen, I don't want you to go far because I want to pull you and Black Jesus back on, all right? Okay. I appreciate you, love. The reason that I brought both of them on, here's how I, under, here's how I understand. I hate saying the how I feel because women do that and then followed by that, they'll say a feeling like I love to stay on the side of like, facts in this order. Facts, logic statistics and data because when facts won't work we can rely on statistics data and logic and that those things those components can come together and get us as close to a fact as we can get without it being a fact right i feel as though you were probably coming at me and not the information because watch this two plus two is motherfucking four regardless how i said it and regardless how my delivery was that information is still accurate can we agree on that? We can. But, um... The sad part is, um, what I was saying about Kevin Samuels, it got, probably, I guess it got you upset or whatever, but what I was saying about him, those white women, when he died, even after he died, they were all on social media. Kevin, we did it. We got the fucking ring, Kevin. When they said we did it, well, we know he was already dead. They were. They had mentally partnered up with him looked past all of the seaweed, all of the lewd fish in the water because they saw gold behind the seaweed and they utilized it to get married. All of the while, black women were so upset about his delivery, they didn't utilize any of it. There was that one girl, she's, fam she's TikTok famous now. Abby, is it? Yes. She was one of the ones who said, what, what do our women say? Um, the message, we received the message. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. She said that, and I looked at that like a disgrace because she was literally saying, we can't believe black women couldn't look past his delivery and get those jewels he was dropping. There's nothing you can do to get rid of the facts that are involved inside of facts. You think that I'm attacking black women. When 69% of our women are having children by multiple different men, how do you think that those children are going to turn out? And you believe that disrespecting black women is the biggest obstacle that we have when most of the disrespect. Have you stopped to think, how come Asian women aren't getting the disrespect that black women get? How come Latino women aren't getting? How come white women aren't getting? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, yes, because I lived in Japan for years. Tell me what your response is to it. Um, and it goes back to the home. It goes back to the way that these women were raised, their experience, their environment. Um, the Asian culture is completely different. Oh, you're talking about how those other racial women were raised. Correct. Um, in my experience, living in Japan for six years, um, their whole trajectory is different. Um, their family values are different. You don't see the amount of unwed um, Asian women um, as we do here in America. Now, I want to circle back, not deviating from your question. Which I means you're going to deviate. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I, 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 I just want to circle back to what Miss Rhonda said. I agree with what Miss Rhonda said, and I agree with what Black Jesus said. Okay? The difference in them and you was the delivery. Which doesn't matter though, right? I just, facts over feelings. Have you ever stopped to think how men built this world? We don't do that stuff. We don't do that. Well, she cheated on me, so boss, I can't come in and help you guys build that skyscraper what? today. 
Just hear me out. We don't do that. Just, just hear me out. You see the healthy discussion that we just had with Miss Rhonda and Black Jesus on the phone, where they were able to articulate their point. Never once did they say anything disparaging. Never once did they say anything disrespectful. What got me, not triggered me, today when I came across your video was the fact, it was not feeling, was the fact that you have a valid point. You have something to contribute, but it does not require you to stand there and equate value to look and women specifically over 30, which I'm 46, divorced by choice. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, would you date Michael B. Jordan right now? No. That's fine. Go on with your point. No, I wouldn't. Why are you surprised? Ma'am, is it, is it fair to say that you probably can't get the man you want? Is it fair to say that? No, it's not. I can have any man I want. We people, we have just encountered an alien, a Martian, a <laughs> one of a kind, a <laughs> one of a kind. The only black woman on the planet who can get any man she wants, despite all of the complaining that women are doing about men. Mr. Prince, I'm single by choice. No, you're not. So listen, so so you're telling me there's no man that can cross paths with you that can get your attention. Is that what you're saying? What is a man getting my attention? Ma'am, I'm just asking you, is there no man who can cross paths with you and get your attention to the point of being open to dating him? Oh, I didn't say I didn't date. I'm asking you, ma'am. Is me. there no man who can cross paths with you and incite you to desire dating him on a serious level? There's plenty of men that can do that. Okay, which means you simply are open to that caliber of individual, but he's not selecting you. No, I'm not selecting him. We're going to move past this. They, they all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not selecting them. There has never been a man that I have desired that I haven't been able to get. And I'm talking about... Ma'am, you're single. By choice. 54% of African-American men do not have children. 57% make middle class income or higher. Now, you're telling me out of all of these numbers, you can mm -hmm. have any one of them, but are yeah. you kidding me? No, I'm not. So why are you dead? Okay, it's going to get ugly then. Okay, so let's go. if let's you go. have a pool of resources of men who are amazing, but you won't choose them, that means you're out experiencing your HOE phase, right? No. You're not even looking for anything serious, right? No. I, so I, which is it? Either you're looking for, you're open to something serious or you're not. There hasn't been a man that has met me mentally, emotionally, and physically to the point where I want to indulge in serious. Ma'am, are you listening to this conversation? Oh, yes, I am. You're saying that because um, I, I, I have, I'm not being chosen. You just told me that you ran across amazing men and things like this. Yeah, I've ran across amazing men. So why did what why why aren't you married to them? Because I chose not to. So you go out of your way to not lock in with amazing men. Because um these amazing <laughs> men, let me go ahead and say that. Um these amazing men are not amazing. Yes, they might have the good credit score. Yes, they might have the full. See, man, you see what you're doing. It's like, are they amazing? You say one thing, then you double back on they're it. They're amazing. Let me go ahead and clarify amazing. They're amazing per a check. But so for you thought I was talking about economically. This whole show is talking about dating. You thought I was talking economically. I did. I did. To be honest, everyone knows you kind of just stumbled up in your things and you know it didn't make sense. Ma'am, you're not, you're not locked in because you can't get the type of man that you seek. As human beings, we, as human beings, we get what we can get. Can we agree on that? 
we get what we can get? What as human beings, we get the best that we can. Can, can we agree on that? Even in food, in, in, in whatever, sex, whatever. Can we agree on that? We yes. seek to get the best that we can, right? Yes. We just you can't get what you want. She doesn't want to disappear. Say that again. You can't get what you want. Yes, I can. So why don't you have it? Because I just don't want to. You don't want perfection. You don't want somebody amazing. Ma'am, no one believes you. Okay. You're all over the place. No, and I'm you know you're all over the place. You no, just told the entire world you don't want an amazing man. <laughs> I did not say I don't want an amazing man. What I said, and let me clarify, because this conversation... No, we can get past this. It's not going to go anywhere. You kind of keep doubling back. When no, points not. get debunked, you you'll double back and put a Band-Aid on it. You keep interrupting where no, I... No, ma'am. You actually get all of your point out, but when you find out that that point is a bad point, you go back with a Band-Aid on it and try no, to fix it. Have I dated the successful man? Yes. Have I dated the... the, the ma'am, we've already gotten past the success part. You know very well what we're talking about. But I am at a point in my life Past divorce. Ma'am, you just told us you could get the man you wanted. Do you I understand did. that? But listen, I am at a point in my life where I choose to be happy by myself. If I wanted to be married, I could. So but you're I the one woman who comes across the man, the perfect man that you want, but you say, ah. Ma'am, you know you're not being honest. You're being very disingenuous. But listen, we can skip past that. Okay. I want to say this. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. We're talking about leverage. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that men are superior to women? No. I know you don't. Excuse me. I know you don't. And we're going to go here with it. Name me three things that women are superior to men in. As, it pertains, as it pertains to the five essentials of life. Food, shelter. Name me three, three, three of those. Give me three. Three of, I'm sorry, I didn't. You're chipping in. That, that women are superior to men. Listen, I'm just going to say, men are superior to women. And you're entitled to your viewpoint. You can't even stay alive without us. You can't stay alive without us. You can't remain living without us. Do you know what would happen if every man on the planet went to the highest mountain with a bullhorn and said, "I decree today." We will remove ourselves from every matter pertaining to women in its extremists. No protection, no nothing. Do you know what would happen in all of 24 hours? You think all women would die? You think the world would be able to survive without men? Do you know what an infrastructure is? Oh, wow. Well, well we're I'm really asking you because the infrastructure isn't just one thing. It is how your food is. It is how your drinking supply how you get clean water, right? It is how heat goes to all of these homes. It is how dams that are that are the size of small cities, once they break, how they get 